Okay, today we're going to be looking at um, comparing different data um, representations. So what this is about is we need to, when, we, when, when we're dealing with um, a set of data, we need to really be able to know how we're going to present that data and what is the most meaningful way to do it that's going to be clear and coherent way to communicate our message. So some there's lots of different types of um, ways to represent data. We can have pictograms, we can have vertical, line graphs, bar charts, pie charts, and also the ones that we've been looking at previously, the cumulative frequency graphs and the um, histograms. Um, and these are all ways in which we can, these ones are, are ways which we can display um, qual qualitative data and um, also ungrouped quantitative data. In general, people find these types of um, representations the easiest to understand. Um, one of the things you should factor into your decision how to represent this data is who's going to be your audience. If you're, odd, if you're trying to present data to members of the public who maybe don't have um, the best understanding about how statistics work, you would choose the simplest form. But if you're creating a presentation to a scientific community, you're looking for the one that's going to... That, that's not the main consideration. You're wanting the, the best way to present the data which will give the best understanding as to what's happening, um, depending on what you are um, presenting. So th that means we need to take in some other um, things into consideration when we're deciding. So we need to know the proportion of s small, medium and large values <coughs> is um, something that we could prove val um, important. Now, if you have a small data set often the best way to present that information is through a stem and leaf diagram which we saw earlier now the reason that this works really well for the small data set is it's um it's a visual representation so it's easier for our brains to really grasp what's happening but it also allows the raw data to be preserved. So, for example, when we saw previously with the cumulative data set and you've got your graph, that raw data isn't in that. It's embedded in the, in the graph, but with um, when you've got a smaller data set, you're able to preserve that raw data through the stem and leaf diagram, but still have a visual representation of what is happening. Now, obviously, having the raw data there is not particularly helpful if you've got a large data set. The preserving the um, data will um, be a distraction from what's going on and it just becomes a mess and you can't really get a handle on what's happening. It's not as important as when it's a, as when it is a smaller data set. So when we've got a large data set, things like um, the frequency diagrams and the cumulative frequency diagrams and histograms are all going to be um, what's going to be more important to represent that type of data. So <coughs> our choice 
needs to be um, determined by the type of data we've got, the quality of the data, the quantity of the data, sorry, um, the audience, and the objective in the um, representation. Your most important, what you're importantly trying to um, ask yourself, am I able to present this data in a way that is clear and is not going to be misleading? in any way. You don't want to be somebody who's taking data and using it to manipulate people. You want to be somebody who is taking data to give a clear representation of what is the truth in a situation. And um, sadly, statistics can be used too often as tools of manipulation. And we want to avoid that. So, Here's a little um, flow chart to help us um, understand this. So we've got the three types of data. We've got our qualitative data. We've got discrete quantitative data. And we have continuous data. And our discrete um, quantitative data can be ungrouped and it can be grouped. So for our ungrouped and for our qualitative data, these can be you can use pictograms. vertical line graphs oops oh dear. bar charts pie charts and sectional bar charts And as I previously said, these typically are the easiest for people to really understand because they're highly visual. So, but if you have um, grouped discrete quantitative data and it's a small amount, we'd use our stem and leaf diagram. If it's a larger amount, um, just a large amount, um, we have to use um, in the same way as we would do with continuous data either a histogram or a cumulative frequency graph. So I hope that helps.